Welcome to another episode of Terrain School. This week we're going to be tackling something a little bit more substantial. We're actually going to make an entire 3x3 gaming table for Don't Look Back. It's going to be a rundown, spooky drive-in cinema. I did a quick sketch earlier of what my rough plan was. I don't always sketch ahead of time, but I figured for the purposes of this video it would help you guys visualize what to expect. You can see on the left we have the Sundown Diner MDF kit. I've done a dirt road. The overall theme for this one is sort of a drive-in cinema in a small country town area. It's nestled in between some fields and it's kind of just generally run down looking. That's the plan. Let's get started. Here you can see I've laid out the 3x3. I cut this out at 3 quarter inch MDF. That way it's quite thick and I don't have to do any additional framing. MDF can warp if you're doing a lot of scenic and things like that to it. I cut some concrete pads on the laser cutter. These are also easily doable with foam board or just sheets of foam or even just cut up cardboard. You don't need to be as fancy as me. Putting the building in just to kind of test the fit as I put the rest of these concrete pads down. Gives me a bit of an idea of how everything is going to come together. I just glued these down with super glue. Nothing too difficult. I altered the position a little bit as I went, but I kind of just mostly added some extra pads. Now it's time to cut the field. This is a pre-made field sheet that they use in model train layouts. I quite like it. This is basically just corrugated cardboard with texture on it. But it saves me a little bit of time. I glued this down with some super glue and then put some spray paint cans on there just to make sure it didn't warp upwards. You also could use white glue for this too. So I dusted all of the concrete with some flat black to start with, just to kind of make it that sort of oil slicked look. And then I grabbed an extra piece of scrap and sort of just did some very quick stenciling around the concrete. Again, this is just to add a little bit of dimension. A lot of this is probably gonna get covered up with dirt and additional paint. I went over the black with a little bit of gray and then some cinnamon. And then finally, uh, just sort of like a dirt brown color. I went and got a corking gun and just some cork. I can't remember the exact type, but it's whatever I had on hand. You could use plaster, you could use sculptor mold. It's really just to fill some of the gaps between the concrete and the surface, make it a little bit better of a, better of a transition. I then started on the road section. So I wanted this to be a dirt road and to have a lot of texture and kind of uh, that sort of like muddy, dusty road. Uh, again, I just used cork for this. Um, you could use plaster or anything else like that, but this is just what I have on hand. Make sure you smooth it out and put sort of some some streaks in it to make it look like it's been well traveled and then it's time to put that under the fan to dry all right now it's dry we'll take it back onto the workbench and we'll give it a coat of flat brown this is just kind of like your base coat before you put any of the other texture on 
and it really helps to kind of tie everything together underneath. I like to use spray paint because I'm lazy and impatient. All right, let's put some basic white glue, brush that all around, get it into all the different cracks. I went pretty thick with this because I really wanted there to be a solid layer to tie the grout in. This is a sanded grout by Polyblend, just one of their dark brown colors as my base coat. And I went and sprinkled that all over the glue. I went over with their beige sand color afterwards. And then sort of a mid-tone brown to finish it off. Then you get a brush and kind of just blend it all together. Brush it off of some of the concrete sections, brush it off the road. And this really helps to create a very believable dirt texture. Wet it down with some water first. And then after that, some water, glue, and soap mixture. And this should dry pretty rock hard afterwards. Once again, we'll put it under the fan to dry. So now it's time to start weathering some of the buildings. I grabbed one of the prototype kits for the Sundown Diner that we had on hand. And the plan for these buildings is I'm just going to do some very simple quick weathering with my airbrush. Because a lot of this tutorial is about how to do scenic work, I'm just going to get a couple of basic colors and start with that. We're going to start off with some monument turquoise. The building is already a very light green and I just wanted to add a bit of color modulation to help break up the flatness. Again, I'm just going around really rough on these buildings and I'm just adding very slight amount of dimension to the colors. After that, I'm gonna go in with some Model Air Red Brown and add some weathering and some shading and some streaking. And this will be all I'll do to this building. You can always go back afterwards and add additional weathering or effects or if you wanted to get more complicated about it you could but for the purposes of this video I kept it pretty simple. After we were done with the drive-in building, I got some monument warm flesh and I have this small wooden outbuilding and I'm just gonna do some overbrushing just to add a bit of extra dimension to this kit as well. I find that just doing some simple steps like this can really help to add an additional color element and texture element to these kits. And especially once they're sitting on a nicely scenic gaming table, uh, they just look that bit extra cool. I'm going to do the same to all of the wooden fences. Again, it's just about breaking up the flatness and just adding a bit of extra visual interest. Now it's time to paint the screen. I'm going to base it with some Rust-Oleum Red Primer. This is just directly over the pre-paint. And then I'm going to go in with some Rust-Oleum Fire Orange and just spatter it across the entire screen. And this is going to make a really believable rust effect. And I think it looks great. Okay, now it's time for final assembly and scenic. I'm going to start by gluing all the fences down. I'm just going to use super glue for this. 
Uh, you could also use white glue or some hot glue, but again, super glue is what I had on hand. You'll notice that I left all of this stuff on their bases. You could glue them without their bases. I had these kits pre-built on hand, so I kind of just wanted to use them as is. And I think the bases help to give them a bit of extra height. A lot of those will get covered with scenic anyway, so. All right, now it's time for scenic. We're gonna put down some straight white glue to start with. I'm gonna go around the base of these fences and make sure that it's sort of a uneven edge. You don't wanna paint a perfectly straight line. I'm gonna use some Scenic Express Alpine Blend and I'm just gonna sprinkle this over the straight white glue. That's gonna go all around the edges of the fences and then a little bit in some of the open areas too. The next step is going to be putting on some static grass. I'm gonna take my static grass applicator. This is a flock box and I don't believe it's sold anymore. It works just like any other static grass applicator though. I'm gonna take some beige six millimeter static grass to start with and I'm gonna put some lines of thick white glue. This is straight glue, I'm not gonna dilute it at all. And you want kind of a thicker coat because it gives more for the static grass to stick to. As you can see, the static electricity pulls the fibers upwards and you get a really realistic looking grass effect. One thing that I really like to do is mix beige and green together as I'm going. It helps to add a bit of color and a bit of visual flow while doing scenic. I'm just mixing straight into the same glue area. This is a really good example of how the static grass applicator works. You see those fibers are all just standing up. If you're working on a table like this, a really good idea to invest in one of these instead of using thousands of static grass tufts. Lastly, we just wanna go down the center of the road, kind of make it look like that classic country road with the grass strip down the middle. And then once we're done with the board, I'm gonna actually start vacuuming with a small little shop vac. Empty your vacuum before you start this and that way you can just recycle all of your grass afterwards. And you can see how this really helps to sell um, the board as being kind of like an overgrown, cracked concrete area with grass growing through. This is one of my favorite steps of doing scenic. I really love this. Now I'm going to take some super leaf by Scenic Express and I'm going to sprinkle that straight over the uh, alpine areas that I added earlier and all over, basically all over the table because I want to make this look kind of like it's covered in dried leaves and it's been left unused for a while. Now it's time to get some corn stalks. These are by JTT Scenics. These are two inch corn stalks or O scale. I'm gonna go through and glue some fairly random lines. We still need to be able to get miniatures in between them and we don't wanna to go too overboard. These are not cheap, so I would recommend 3D printing some or making your own if you're on a budget. Now it's time to put a coat of glue over more or less the entire board. You probably want to make sure that your glue soap mixture is properly mixed before doing this. It's gonna dry clear, so don't be afraid to be pretty heavy handed with it. And I'm gonna take the board out and set it in front of the fan to dry. We're gonna add the speakers as one of the final little finishing touch pieces. building in and the side awnings 
I also grabbed this little silver outbuilding. I decided I wanted to add some extra bushes just in front of here, uh, just a bit of extra visual detail. And with that step, the board is done. Ready for a game of Don't Look Back or any other horror modern game you might want. Make sure you like and subscribe guys. Until next time, thank you for watching.